Hey everyone, you're watching We Had That, and today I'm going to talk about the 1984 Wave 3 Masters of the Universe Mechanic action figure from Mattel. When Mattel released their first wave of Masters of the Universe figures in 1982, they put out a very solid wave of eight figures. They seemed to rush to get a second wave out by Christmas, and this wave contained only six figures. By 1984, Mattel knew they had a hit on their hands and gave the designers a little more time to design the third wave. This time, there would be 12 new figures added to the line. It was in this third wave that Mechanek first appeared. Mechanek's gimmick was that when you twist his waist, his neck extended. According to his package, Mechanek was a heroic human periscope. The art on the back of his package shows him using his extended neck to spy on Skeletor and Beastman. It's speculated that Mechanek arrived in stores ahead of the other figures from the third wave. This theory is supported by the fact that Mechanek packages can be found with none of the other Wave 3 characters pictured. In addition to his gimmick of an extending neck, Mechanek also came with a yellow club with a variety of geometric shapes molded into it. In the mini-comics, Mechanek first appeared in the issue He-Man and the Insect People, which is also the mini-comic that I most often see packaged with the figure. Mechanek appears in many panels of this issue and has a little bit of dialogue, but even though his neck is extended in a few panels, he only uses the gimmick of having an extending neck once in the issue, and that's to ram his head into a giant bug. The second mini-comic featuring Mechanek is called The Oblisk. This one was also sometimes included with the Mechanek figure. Mechanek's appearance in this one was a relatively small one. He-Man asks him to use his long neck to read the writing on a mysterious oblisk that appears. There are a total of four images of Mechanek in this issue, three of which are just his back, but it does feel like the best use of his neck gimmick in any of the mini-comics. In the issue Skeletor's Dragon, Mechanek does use his extending neck to see further out, he also appears in numerous panels and does have a little bit of dialogue, but it honestly feels like the one time he did use his neck wasn't all that necessary to the story, and they really didn't specifically need Mechanek as much as make up an excuse to use him in this issue. Although Mechanek does appear a fair amount in Mantena and the Menace of the Evil Horde, he could easily have been replaced by pretty much any other character. Although he does have his neck extended every time we see him in this issue, he never really uses the gimmick of having an extending neck. His final appearance in the comics was a single image of him standing at the far side of a group of heroic warriors in the issue The Treachery of Modulok. In addition to his many comic appearances, he was thrown into the background of two of the Golden Books. In Maze of Doom, he appears in two panels drawn by someone who seems to have only seen the figure once, and apparently it was a long time before drawing him for this book. In Dangerous Games, he's just a silhouette randomly appearing in the background behind Man-at-Arms. When it came to the Filmation cartoon, except for Zodak, who only appears a little bit, the rest of the characters from Wave 1 were included in several episodes each. The Wave 2 characters also became regulars with the exception of Faker, but by the time Wave 3 came out, there weren't a lot of episodes left before the show stopped production. Filmation seemed to try to get all of the characters on the show at least a little bit, but there were so many new figures in Wave 3 and so few episodes left in the series that it was difficult to include them all. As a result, Mechanek only appears in three episodes of the cartoon. However, he makes solid appearances in all three of those episodes. His first appearance was in the episode Disappearing Dragons, where Webstore and Cobra Khan are capturing dragons. Mechanek and Buzzoff watch the two villains from a distance, and Mechanek uses his neck to stretch above the scenery and get a better view. We get a chance to see what Mechanek is seeing through his goggles also. When Mechanek and Buzzoff confront Webstore and Cobra Khan, 
A fight ensues where Cobra Khan uses his elongating arms, a feature that actually goes with the 1987 character Squeeze, to grab Mechanek and then tries to spray him in the face with sleep gas. But Mechanek extends his neck to move his face out of the way of the cloud of gas. Mechanek then spins his neck, which spins his body to spin Cobra Khan around in a circle, freeing him from Cobra Khan's grasp. Unfortunately, Webstor knocks out both of our heroes and Cobra Khan sprays him with sleep gas for good measure. Just as our heroes are about to be taken away, presumably back to Skeletor, He-Man and Orko show up and chase off the bad guys. Cobra Khan decides to use a transporter ray on He-Man. When Orko tries to stop it, he ends up sending all of them, except Orko, to another dimension. He-Man, Mechanek, and Buzz-Off go after Webstor and Cobra Khan, assuming that they will know where the transporter has brought them. While searching for them, He-Man finds the missing dragons and discovers that they've been brought to this dimension for gladiator-style games. The heroes are captured, and He-Man agrees to fight in the games. If he wins, the heroes and the dragons will be free to return to Eternia. With a little help from his friends, He-Man defeats his foe. Mechanek uses his neck and goggles one last time to spot Cobra Khan and Webstor. He-Man captures them, and everybody goes back to Eternia. Mechanek's next appearance is in the episode Here, There, Skeletors Everywhere. About seven minutes into the cartoon, Mechanek and Cyclone can be seen in the throne room standing next to King Randor. A chaotic rumble is heard, and King Randor asks Mechanek, what's the commotion? Mechanek extends his neck and says, It's Prince Adam, sire. A few moments later, Mechanek points to the floor and shouts, Look, as Skeletor cuts a hole in the floor to steal a duplicating machine built by Man-at-Arms. We then see him standing with a group of heroes looking at Skeletor through the hole in the floor. When He-Man chases after Skeletor, Mechanek goes along with him. Skeletor has left laser mines to slow them down, but Mechanek extends his neck for a better view and uses his special goggles to see the hidden mines. Mechanek is still with He-Man when Mossman calls him back to the palace. When Battle Cat senses danger, Mechanek extends his neck to see a large group of small Skeletors in front of the palace. Then, as He-Man searches for a secret entrance to the palace, Mechanek extends his neck to keep a lookout for the many Skeletors. Inside the secret tunnel, a gaggle of many Skeletors incapacitate He-Man and Mechanek with a sonic sound trap, but Mechanek is able to extend his neck and get out of the sound bubble to avoid the trap. Mechanek uses his extending neck for the sixth and final time in this episode to spy on the many Skeletors while He-Man and Man-at-Arms come up with a plan to destroy the duplicator. In his final appearance in the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe cartoon, he was in the episode Search for a Son, which starts out with Mechanek playing a game with a couple of kids. Man-at-Arms sees this and tells one of the boys that Mechanek had a son about his age who was lost. Man-at-Arms goes on to say that Mechanek was visiting Dragon Mountain with his son Philip when a freak storm blew in and literally blew his son away. Mechanek hurt his neck badly in the storm, but when it was over, he searched everywhere for his son anyway. Mechanek fainted from the pain, and that's when Man-at-Arms found him and gave him a bionic neck. Mechanek can be seen hanging around in the palace while King Randor talks to Man-at-Arms and Prince Adam, presumably just because he's standing around. Man-at-Arms asks Mechanek to lead the king and queen's caravan through the desert. Count Marzo shows up at the palace and tells Mechanek to deliver the king and queen to him instead, and he will give his son back. Mechanek refuses and instead drives the battle ram in the caravan. Mechanek leads the king and queen into an old fort, which turns out to be a trap set by Count Marzo. He-Man bursts in to save the day, but Count Marzo tells He-Man that he's surrounded. 
Mechanek extends his neck over the wall to confirm that Count Marzo is telling the truth and there are dragons surrounding the place. Count Marzo gets away, but He-Man was still able to save the king and queen as well as Mechanek's son. Mechanek did make one final extremely brief cameo in the background of the He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special, but it was just a quick shot of his neck and head in the background as the camera scrolled past across a room. Mechanek was really never much of a main character back in the 80s, while characters like Tila were featured on all kinds of merchandise in the 80s like puzzles, stickers, lunchboxes, erasers, book and record sets, and more, Mechanek only appeared in one puzzle in the background fighting Clawful. However, when the new Masters of the Universe cartoon arrived in 2002, Mechanek was a more fleshed-out character and felt like he had more of a personality. There were several figures of him in the 2000X line. Since then, Mechanek hasn't been released as a figure for every line of the Masters of the Universe figures, but he has been included a decent amount. What do you think of Mechanek? Did you have him as a kid? If so, what role did he play in your adventures? Did his extending neck feature make him a cooler figure for you? Tell me in the comments below. Also, please give this video a like, share it on social media, and if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And one last thing, if you collect toys, you should know about Toy Lanta, one of the biggest toy shows in the southeastern United States, held annually just north of Atlanta, Georgia. Visit toylanta.com for more information. As always, thanks for watching.